Good evening, guys. Welcome to the first episode of A Day in the Life of. Today, we're here with Dr. Shagarika Talukta. Talukta. I can't pronounce her surname. But <laughs> well, we call her Rika today. Uh, Rika is a ST2 in cardiothoracic surgery. And uh, today, we'll be asking her questions about what made her go into cardiothoracic surgery and what life is like as a junior trainee at the Royal Papworth Hospital. So, Rika, thank you very much for speaking with me. No problem. Um, and giving me your time. Um, I know you post your shift and you're uh -huh. meant to be home, but uh, That's fine. you're. Um, helping me and helping our viewers um, in educating themselves about cardiothoracic surgery. So um, if you don't mind just introducing yourself, where did you come from, where have you studied, sure. and uh, what led you to, to Papworth? Okay, sure. Uh, I studied me medicine in UCL in London, and I grew up mostly in London, and uh, my family are from Bangladesh, and I then went on to take a few years out of training because I wasn't too sure what I wanted to do in medicine. Um, I knew it was surgery probably, but I wasn't so sure about what type of surgery. Can you so, say, sorry, out of training, when was this? Like, out of So stage? it was um, after finishing foundation year one and two. So okay. after the first two years of being a doctor, I uh, took, a, took a gap for two years. Yes. And it was in that final rotation of foundation year two that I did cardiothoracic surgery for the first time. Um, and it was, um, I finally found the thing I was very happy to come in to work for without having paid, being paid or oh, doing okay. anything. So um, well, I, I knew that I found the specialty that, that, you enjoy that I enjoyed oh. and I enjoyed all aspects of it, pre-operative, post-operative, everything. And then so what did you do in these two years that you took out after F2? Uh, so I realized, you know, I was coming into the game a little bit late. Mm -hmm. A lot of other cardiothoracic surgeons, they knew they wanted to do this straight from medical school. Um, and so they have very good portfolios for many, many years. So I had to take a little bit of time out to build that and to mm -hmm. um, work my way up to the application process. Mm -hmm. So I did a little bit of travel uh, mm -hmm. in those two years. Then I also did a diploma in tropical medicine because oh, nice. I would yeah. like to work in developing countries in the future at some point. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, a lot of my time in those two years was spent at the Royal Brompton Hospital uh, as, a, as a locum uh, SHO. So obviously it's cardiothoracic, but um, so cardiothoracic, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. um, very quickly divides into cardiac and thoracic once yes. you're in, right? Um, is, have you chosen which, which, what you want to do? Yes, I think... Um, cardiac is the way for me. Um, I think I realized that uh, in my years out of training, so coming into training, I didn't have to think about it too much. Okay. Um, but I will also do a year of thoracic surgery and who knows, things might change. Things might change. That's always, always important to keep yeah, an open mind. Exactly. Yeah. Um, great. And um, so now being at Papworth, mm -hmm. you've done your first year and second year here? Yes. Yes. Yep. Sir. And now you're in your second year of uh, what, ST2. And yep. then how long is the training till, for, till you become a consultant? So it's meant to be eight years in total but actually there are some changes coming into place for surgical training this year and it will affect me so I will only do five five years of registrar training so seven years in total seven years in total and then hopefully you'll be post CCT That's completion right. of training yes and then you can do fellowships or apply for consultancy posts yeah great right. so before we go into what your day is like mm -hmm. um, what do you now being in this job uh, mm -hmm. what do you like most about it at this level I think um, it's a bit of an in-between. So I'm um, officially an SHO and I look after the patients on the ward, but I also am getting a taste of what a registrar is like to look up the patients for the next day for the operating theatre, um, to learn to see your patient after you've done an operation mm -hmm. in the ICU. So I'm, it's, a, it's a bit of an in-between and it can be a bit uncertain at times, mm -hmm. but I think it's also very exciting because you're junior, you're well protected, you're well supported, mm -hmm. uh, but you're learning how to be a bit more responsible and, mm -hmm. and and gain a little bit more of um, um, uh, the decision-making part of the of the team as well. And that's what you most enjoy. And, and what was at this stage, what are the things that you don't like so much about the job? Um, I think some of the ward work can be <laughs> a bit uh, of yeah. manual labor sometimes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the discharge summaries. Yeah. Yeah. Also trying to balance the two, so trying mm. to do my day job as an, as an SHO, uh, but also learn how to be uh, a registrar who goes to clinic, who sees the patients for the next day, who maybe consents patients and so on. Mm. Um, so trying to do both and learn from both, basically, it's is a bit hard. can be a bit struggle, mm -hmm. fair enough. And then hopefully after next year in SD3, you'll be full on clinic and theatres. Yes, and that's telling, right. And telling us poor F1 and F2 is one what to do on Taking the Taking you on a ward round in the morning <laughs> and then goodbye. Right. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's basically the life of an F1 and F2. We'll do an episode on that, but uh, I'm sure yes. all of you... No, uh, no. I'll, I'll try and be more present. You'll be than, more present. You'll be one of the nicer and 
Well, well present like, register, yes. fair enough. Yeah. If you just take us through your day, so when you come mm -hmm. in the morning till when you leave, what, mm -hmm. what is the day like in uh, as a junior registrar in cardiothoracic surgery? At ST2 level, what I do mm -hmm. is um, come in just before 7, uh, mm -hmm. so Papworth has an early start at 7 a.m. Um, come in, change into scrubs, and then you come upstairs, and depending which team you are in, um, you try and print the patient list of teams, uh, and then you often get started on the ward round soon after 7 o'clock uh, with your registrar. And so you go see however many patients there are for your consultants who've had operations and, on, and are now on the ward. Um, and then uh, sometimes this is done before 8 o'clock, and sometimes we have so many patients it may go beyond that. Uh, in that case, at 8 o'clock we go down to the operating theatres and we brief for the day. Uh, which means that we go through the patients that are um, going to have an operation that day uh, and that's done in each theatre with each consultant. Okay. Um, so wherever I am that day, I might go down and join that theatre as well. Okay. And then you come upstairs. If I have planned to go to theatre that day, then I would... Um, uh, try and do my jobs for the patients as soon as possible. So the, the, that may involve writing up their notes, getting their discharge summaries ready if they're going home, um, requesting x-rays, blood tests, and so on. Um, and then I try and do that as much as possible before 8.45, at which time I will try and hand over my bleep, which is the thing that is the bane of our lives, <laughs> yeah, um, nice. to a colleague yeah. if, they, if they are able to hold it, uh, and then I would go to theatre. Often this is not possible in the morning, so what I like to do is to finish all my jobs by lunchtime and then try and hand over that bleep for, for, for the afternoon so I go to the second case in the yeah. operating theatre instead. Um, the day finishes whenever it finishes often. Yeah. Um, if I've been to theatre especially, there are things to catch up on when you come back to the ward and you want to often do another evening ward round with your mm -hmm. senior registrar or your consultant and mm -hmm. to check that all the patients are okay and mm -hmm. that the things you asked for in the morning were done and that they are progressing, basically. And then um, you may update the list mm -hmm. and then you hit the road, basically. Hit the road and then repeat again. And repeat again and the repeat next again. day. Repeat yes. the next day. But it all ends up, it all ends to what you love to do, which is being yes. in theatre, yes. opening up chests, and oh, as yeah. you said today, being yeah. <laughs> elbow deep in the chest. Oh, yeah, well, not quite, you know, we try not to do that. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, okay, so thank you for going through it through three days, but that's, that's, that's a typical SHO in cardiothoracic surgery. Yeah. ST3 onwards, then that's when you hit the theatres yeah. pretty much five times a week or? Yeah, so you get allocated to theatres and clinics. Um, very rarely will there be a day you're not allocated to either one. Mm -hmm. On those days you would be expected to do the ward round and mm -hmm. um, possibly catch up on your admin work. Mm -hmm. uh, and then of course there are on-call days where you are just holding the bleep. Fine. Okay. Well, thank you very much for telling us that. Mm -hmm. um, now slightly uh, questions from a different angle. Mm -hmm. um, yourself being a female mm -hmm. a woman in cardiothoracic sur in surgery. Mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of push now for women in surgery. And um, how have you found it um, for sort of getting into training and now being in training as a woman? Mm. Um, I think uh, cardiothoracics especially, um, and sometimes all of surgery, but that's changing a lot mm. in some specialties, uh, has been traditionally a male-dominated specialty, mm. uh, especially cardiothoracics, I think. Uh, a lot of other surgical specialties are not so much traditionally male like ENT, plastics, they're a little bit more friendly um, to, towards women uh, traditionally. But I think uh, times are changing and in my year alone uh, the top five trainees um, selected for that year were female yeah, okay. um, and uh, I think it's yeah. gone, on, gone on to each year include yeah. a lot of female trainees Great, yeah. in, the, in the new recruits basically. Yeah. So I think things are changing. Yeah. Um, I think initially when I went for the specialty and yeah. I expressed my interest in Basildon, um, I had some wonderful male mentors actually who inspired yeah. me but I also equally had um, male surgeons who told me uh, not that I can't do it, but that I shouldn't do it because it may be hard for a woman uh, to balance with her family life. Um, but I think now in training, sometimes um, it can feel like I am an imposter or an invader in, in, a, in a boy's world, but um, I think that's not true and it's often a perception perhaps I even have because of some of the struggles I've had previously. Mm. Um, but we've got a lot of female trainees um, in Papworth and it's um, mm. uh, I've, I've never really been made to feel like I can't do something because I'm a woman, mm. especially now that I'm in training. So I think it's a struggle that can that you can come across until perhaps you've almost proven yourself by getting a number. 
Mm. Uh, that shouldn't be the case, but I think, like mm. I said, I think things are changing. Mm. Um, and there's a great um, Royal College of Surgeons uh, women's ne network, women in surgery, or WINS for short, mm. uh, and I've been involved with them for a few years, mm. and I attend their events, and uh, there have been some great female mentors from that as well. Great, fantastic. Yeah, I might put a link below as well for all female viewers who are interested in surgery to go check it out. Yeah. And what advice have you got for um, the female viewers who are in medical school or in foundation year one or two and want to pursue a career in surgery in general? Yeah, um, yeah sure. I think uh, what you have to first of all do, and it was actually uh, one of the or the only female consultant here in Papua yeah. that told me this, is to not, not ever let anyone tell you that you can't do something because you're a woman. Uh, so I think that's your own perception has to change, that there, there should be no limits in your own mind uh, as to what you can do. Um, if surgery is what you want to do, you should go for it. If cardiothoracic is what you want to do, you should go for it. And then I would say to... Um, Plan and organize, basically. Speak to people who are in training or thinking about it, whatever specialty you want to go into. Mm. Um, start early if you can in medical school to prep your portfolio mm. because it makes life a lot easier. And this is coming from someone who prepped quite late mm. uh, because I realized what I wanted to do quite, quite late. late. Yeah. Um, and then um, both male and female seniors can be very good mentors. So mm. whoever you make a connection with and who supports you, stay in touch with them and um, get their advice on how to how to progress. Okay, those are some good tips, mm -hmm. I think, um, for both male and female listeners, to mm -hmm. be honest. Um, but yeah, um, I think a lot of female listeners definitely will benefit from that. It will be quite inspiring yeah. also to see um, um, others, um, especially as you said, female or um, also being from Bangladesh. Yeah. That's also something I want to ask you about as yeah, well. Sure. Um, to be in in training at such a renowned institute. So now, from like the, your yeah. like ethnic background as a Bangladeshi, yeah. and mm -hmm. I personally got some very good friends who are Bangladeshi. You are yeah. doing really well. Mm -hmm. So I think as a, as a country, you, you've got a lot of quite intelligent yeah. people. Um, <laughs> sure. Have you found any struggles in that regard? Um, to be honest, I have to say I don't know if it's uh, luck or if if I've uh, just had. You know, I've been surrounded by people who know better than that, but I've not ever experienced any racism mm -hmm. um, because of my ethnic background. Mm -hmm. Perhaps I ha have and I didn't realize and it, I let it pass by me. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, the same female cardiac consultant here also told me don't ever let anyone tell you you can't do something because of uh, you come from an ethnic minority. Mm -hmm. So again, don't mm -hmm. let it be a barrier. If you don't let it be a barrier, then others can't uh, stop you from proceeding mm -hmm. because of your this color of your skin or where you're from. Um, I think it has been different. I think it's been is different in a good way mm. that I came from a background which um, mm. you know uh, somewhere a country where healthcare isn't so accessible mm. where people could, um, can't pay for healthcare mm. or good healthcare at least um, and I'm not from a family of medics so much uh, and I think that's allowed me to connect with my patients better actually yeah. so and it's made yeah. me appreciate the NHS despite yeah. its flaws mm -hmm. um, yeah. so I think it's been a good thing in the end yeah. so finally now um, mm -hmm. I know you gave some general tips mm -hmm. regarding um, um, Kind of finding your passion and going mm -hmm. into what, whatever you, what you do, what you want yeah. to do, whether that's cardiothoracic surgery or something else. Yeah. But what tips and tricks have you got specifically, mm -hmm. um, just briefly for our viewers, yeah. um, male or female, all backgrounds, mm -hmm. that they should do um, as a medical student or foundation a doctor mm -hmm. uh, to prepare themselves nice and early, um, so kind of like pragmatic, uh, practical. Okay. Tips if you like to. Um, for entry into surgery. Entry into cardiothoracic surgery. Okay. Yep. Sure. Um, I think one of the things uh, I learned very early is that you have to keep a logbook of any procedures you do. So I would uh, advise you to use the e-logbook website, which is uh, free and any doctor can register. Um, so keep a log of anything you do, even any minor procedure or skin incisions or anything you even assist in because all that experience accumulates. I would um, try and get involved in some research projects. Uh, everybody has to do some research um, in most specialties now, not only yeah. cardiothoracics. Uh, so ask your seniors, ask um, junior trainees like me, um, because we always welcome a little bit of help from medical students or from foundation doctors uh, with research projects. And then the more you show interest, the more involved you will become, uh, and the more um, bigger the bigger your projects will become, and then you will eventually be a first author or a second author as well, mm. and you'll be able to publish. Um, I think try and look up online all the conferences and meetings that are happening for your specialty that you're interested in. Cardiothoracics has a lot of things going on. Um, there are annual meetings for the SCTS, Society for Cardiothoracic Surgery, which is our biggest one for the year. But then the British Thoracic Society also has two meetings a year. Uh, there are specific 
medical student uh, aspects to each meeting. Um, so a, as a medical student, you can apply and submit your abstract um, and you will be allocated separate space and time and prizes for your okay. contribution. So mm -hmm. definitely do that. And um, I would also say keep up your hobbies and your other interests mm -hmm. because they feature in their own little section on the mm. application form. Um, they like to see you're a well-rounded person um, and that you have uh, other skills that transfer to uh, surgery and your work. Mm. So if you're involved in sports and arts, um, uh, anything at all really, I would say to keep it up, keep evidence of it in whatever way you can. Evidence is the big thing. So keep evidence of everything you do, anything you get involved in. Um, and if it involves a consultant signing you off, get that signature early because those people are very hard to hunt down later. True. true. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And I'm going to do a cheeky plug in here. So have you heard of the website called medigate.co.uk? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Very useful. Great. So that website. Um, it's our website. Um, it's a website where you can find all these courses and conferences on one platform and when you attend them, all your certificates, you can log them onto your ePortfolio section uh, which you can create free on the website. So we'll put a link below, menegate.co.uk and everything she basically said mm -hmm. you can put find on that website Put on, put on that website and log everything easily so it'll make your career progression easier. Yeah. So that was my... Uh, no, <laughs> when, you, when it comes to making that portfolio, yeah. if you have it all in one place, it makes it much easier. Thank you so much for talking to Marika. Oh, I really welcome. appreciate your time at uh, 7.15 in the evening. That's fine. Thank you <laughs> for having we're me. We're both working tomorrow as well, so yes. it's been nice and early. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, please comment any uh, questions down below, anything else you'd like to see, um, any specialities in particular you'd like us to interview. Um, and just finally as well, is there any way people can contact you if they've got any questions or any queries about the application? Um, yeah. Is sure. there like a an Instagram account, an email, or anything that you would like to share with the viewers. You don't have to. No, no, that's to, fine. Yeah, my Instagram account uh, is public. You're welcome to uh, contact me through that if you like. Fine. Right. Thank you very much for listening <laughs> and have a good evening.